course, uh, up in northern Wisconsin, where I'm from. So I don't want to make this all about me, but just a little bit of my past and history. I've been in the business for a long time, have a chemistry, chemistry background. In Southern California, I was very disappointed with the cleaners that were out there. I used everything under the sun. Either it wasn't strong enough, uh, or the health and safety factor wasn't there. The other products would burn grass, or they'd make the situation worse. On a wall, you'd have like different colors. They'd turn things kind of like, and they'd, they'd etch stuff. So I got together with chemists in the early 2000s. Um, from two different places out in Southern Cal, found guys that would work with me to create what I wanted, because out here in Southern California, we have situations that are a lot more hardcore than other areas of the US or the world. Like, you know, we have 120, 125 degree temperatures. So when we have oil, we don't, don't just have oil, we have oil that gets so hot on concrete that's 250 degrees, that goes way deep in the concrete, gets super hardened because of all the UV in the sun, and it gets dense and compacted, and then it dries out. Well, the same thing happens with um, rust, and we have uh, battery stains from golf carts. That's another one of my products that we came out with. So the long story short, I was just very unhappy with the cleaners that were out there. Led me on a path to create something that was eco-friendly, that was less hazardous than a lot of the other cleaners were out there. I've, got, I've gotten sick from other cleaners, totally changed my life. Like in 2006, I tried a very well-known product that had hydrochloric acid in it, and I ended, ended up with a skeletal muscular toxicity and also a chronic pneumonia. I was in the hospital for almost two weeks, changed my life. At that point, it was either get out of the business or create something that worked. Because my, my forte and my niche was with hard water restoration, with calcium and efflorescence, calcium carbonate, stuff like that. So if you use something that with hydrochloric acid, there's many different types of hydrochloric acid and many different ways of how to use them. Well, I found chemists that were um, very precise and had the technology to make those products work better, make them safer, put inhibitors on it. So like we talked this morning, you guys that were out there doing some of the, uh, the, the double eagle and the groundskeeper demos, the inhibitors that are in hydrochloric acid isn't going to just flash rust like metal components or the handrails and stuff like that. So uh, our products are a lot more eco-friendly, a lot less, um, you know, your, the health and safety risk to you and your employees is a lot less as well. Um, if at all during uh, this PowerPoint you guys have questions, just raise your hand, it's fine if you, if you want to interrupt me, if you have something pertinent, and I'd rather you uh, ask me the question now versus us getting to the end and you forgetting what it is. So without further ado, uh, welcome to our class. Welcome to F9 University. So the first thing I teach, uh, and I used to have a three and a half day class, and here's the beautiful thing. Now we're going to a one day, sometimes a day and a half classes. But in my three and a half day class, it was interesting because people would leave, and it was a paid class. It was an $1,800 class. Well, you guys are getting the same information as those guys did who paid the $1,800, who had to listen to me for three and a half days, but they would leave with their eyes freaking bogged over. You know, they had so much information in such a short time, and that's why we have the F9 cookbook. It took a couple months to write. It's a beautiful piece. It's a restoration manual. We have several companies that have adopted the F9 cookbook as their SOP, their standard operation procedure, uh, and we'll get that into a little bit. So the information I have here, like I said, if you have questions, raise your hand, and we'll try to get through this stuff pretty quick. So at F9 University, what I teach is we're not power washing companies. And what I mean by that is do we use pressure washers, surface cleaners, do we spray you know, stuff through a power washer? Yes, we do. But me versus somebody else who goes out there to sell you know, why we're out there cleaning, I don't clean just to clean. I clean to make things um, more safer, to make things healthier. Um, we have a coefficient of friction on concrete and when stuff gets dirty, the coefficient of friction is the measure of how slippery a surface is. So the American Disability Act requires that the coefficient of friction, which is just how slippery the surface is, they require that to be between a 0.05 and a 0.08, or a 0.5 and a 0.8, depending on what you measure that with. So when we clean, we are always raising that coefficient of friction to reduce this chance of slipping and falling. So a byproduct of that is that things are a whole lot cleaner and look a whole lot nicer. So we clean concrete to reduce slip and fall risks. We clean buildings to promote better air quality. We clean roofs to save shingles, kill mold, and reduce air conditioning costs. 
We use F9F flow to increase traction on outside surfaces with slippery hard water stains, which we have all over the place out here. Tomorrow we're going to do kind of a small demo. I know Lori's got it all over the place down in Southern Cal. It's one reason I'm doing the hard water stain removal. The, the hard water stains, if you're in an area like Missouri or someplace where you have higher humidity, you don't have a whole lot of hard water stains on flat work. But out here we have, it gets very hard, very slippery. The tensile strength is like super hard. And your coefficient of friction, people are slipping, falling all over, all over the place at these commercial properties. So I have a whole method of getting into those places, selling the American Disability Act, coefficient of friction. Um, there's ways to measure the coefficient of friction. So you could actually take uh, a property map, measure out the slippery areas, submit it to the uh, maintenance people and let them know, hey, these are the areas you have kind of a health and safety issue because of slip, trip, or fall. And then that's an in for you to put them on a maintenance agreement, which I can talk about in a little bit. Uh, okay, so we use F9 bark to rid homeowners' driveways of hazardous substances such as battery acid stains. And of course, a byproduct of this cleaning is that things look better too. Who works in HOAs that have golf carts, golf courses, battery stains, battery issues, spirit acid? A couple people. All right, so, you know, battery stains, the EPA, Storm Water Compliance, DOT, battery, battery stains, battery issues from golf carts, uh, it's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is considered hazardous, toxic, corrosive, and carcinogenic. So if you measure uh, the pH level of that stain on somebody's driveway, it's unlike any other stain that they could have. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but after this class too, if the, the few of you guys have questions about that, let me know. Um, this PowerPoint I'll make available to all you guys. When you signed up, did everybody sign up for the class? Did anybody not sign up for the class? Okay. I'll say, well, you didn't have to, yeah. And just so you know, Martin also has the full line of um, F9 products. He's got a great place over there in Glendale. So I just wanted to put that out there that he's also a good distributor for us. All right, so F9 products are unique and our processes offer much more than just a one stain, one solution method of cleaning. And what that means is, another thing I got sick of is using 20 different products from the same manufacturer that are basically the same product diluted down in different ways, but you have to carry all these products or at least store them to be able to do stuff. So we created processes and systems that you can use with just four cleaners to do everything all the other people can in a safer way and clean it to a much better degree than they can having all those cleaners. So you reduce the amount of clutter, reduce the amount of stuff you have to buy, and reduce the amount of material products that you have to carry on your trucks. Uh, safety, uh, PPE, personal protection equipment. Uh, obviously, you guys know what kind of boots to wear. You're in pressure washing. Um, gloves, we, or I like this Wells Lamont glove. Anybody seen these ones before? I mean, some guys I, I see, I, not necessarily you guys, but I see people post videos and you just have like a nitrile glove and you can see, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's hard to find a good pair of comfortable gloves. If you want to pass these around, they're super cheap. You can get like a pair of 20 for 12 bucks or something on Amazon. The top is totally breathable, so if it does get wet, it dries out real quick, and the bottom has that nitrile neoprene, neoprene stuff on it. That, that's my favorite. Polarized glasses work better to cut through the glare when you're doing restoration work. Uh, respirator. I started using these about five years ago, and since then, anybody who's used these pretty much stick to this type. This is a quick latch 3M respirator. What's nice about these is when you put them on, it has a quick latch right here. So if this is on, and you get a phone call or something, you just unbuckle it and it drops down. Then you put it back up and latch it when you're ready to go. If you want to pass that down. Now the cartridges we get, oh, what I was gonna say is, this whole PowerPoint is gonna be available to all you guys. As long as I have your email, I'll shoot this PowerPoint so you guys can have it. Okay, just don't share it with anybody. Keep it for you and your business. Uh, P100 respirator cartridges for that. If you spray bleach, it's good for that. If you're a wheel cleaner, a fleet wash truck guy, it's good for hydrofluoric acid, good for hydrofluoric acid, it's good for everything. So, there's a few tools that I'm gonna show you guys that can completely change the way you do work and make your life a whole heck of a lot easier when you do go and work. Um, 
Anybody use pH test strips or have to know what they are? Does anybody know what a pH level is? Okay, we'll, we'll back it down a little bit. Okay, microessential laboratories, um, California, they crack down on us in plus seven restoration. I'm using stuff that's a one pH. We'll neutralize it with stuff that's a 14 pH. So the way the pH spectrum works, a one is an acid, a 14 is an alkaline. It actually goes from zero to 14. These measure, these strips measure the pH level of your discharge weight, uh, wash water. So you take a strip, put it in there, it's gonna come up anywhere from red all the way to green and then blue. These are pretty cheap. It's nice to know exactly where your wash water, your discharge wastewater is. Um, from the time you put it down to the time, you know, you either put it in storm drain or discharge on site. You need to be between a five and a nine on the pH scale to legally discharge through the sanitary sewer or the landscape. If it's not there, you can be looking at very stiff fines, going to court, having to pay an attorney, and all that kind of stuff. They don't mess around when it comes to your pH level. So that is good. And what I use when I'm on some of these commercial properties, we handle the West End, all their properties in Southern California, Coachella Valley. Um, our cleaning company, and, and those who don't know, I also have a contra contracting company, pressure wash restoration company in Southern Cal. Um, don't do much of the work out there anymore since I moved up here, but I've got three subs and they handle all the work that we send their way. So when we do properties like the West of Mission Hills or the Marriott or some of those bigger commercial properties, we've got, you know, the regulators all over us, you know, but now they know us, so they leave us alone. But if you do have any issues or you're doing restoration, you want to make sure you also get a digital pH meter because you could be on the five end of the spectrum and not know exactly where you are, but this will tell you exactly where you are. So, and to operate this, all you do is turn it on, comes on, you dip this down for a second, and then it's gonna give you the exact measurement of that pH. And you're just taking that in the right Yep, just yeah, you take it, it's, it's clean, put it in your water, whatever, you can check out the pH. Uh, the F9 spray shield, I made a video of this online. Just came up with this one day. If you do concrete coatings, this thing works awesome. If you spray chemicals, it works awesome. If you're doing vertical work and you need to do like corners or around windows and you're spraying bark on a rust stain or something, or you're taking care of oxidation or whatever it is, you can just put this up there in the corner and spray. So this is 1 16th of an inch. Uh, polycarbonate spray shield, get it at Home Depot Lowe's, True Value Ace. You can fold it upon itself, it's not going to break on you. It's also good in cold weather. Uh, we make these two feet by three feet. So three feet is 36 inches long. Well, at most of those um, like hardware stores, you can buy weather stripping that's also 36 inches long. So if you want to get real technical, you can put that weather stripping on here and then the great thing about it, say you're using this, you know, to spray down, spray in the corners. Well, if you have a door, we'll just pretend this is a door. It's obviously not a door, we'll pretend it is. You guys have problems, you're putting down a wet towel or whatever it is by the door, you run a surface cleaner by it, the water goes underneath. If you've got the weather stripping on here, just kind of put it down just slightly so it's touching the concrete. Take this. Put it there, and then this suction cup sticks right to the door. Mm -hmm. This bottom part, you just push into the bottom of the door, and the weather stripping, it goes down and comes out, and water will not go underneath it. Also good if you know some high higher end places have wood floors, or they have you know whatever you don't want to get water underneath there. And this very simple, cost you 40, 50 bucks less if you do more of them. We don't sell them because it's very cheap and easy to make. You want to pass that around? Too big? Let's pass that around. Where'd you get that suction cup at, Craig? Uh, true value. Like 15 bucks. Yeah, that suction cup, there's all different sizes, different things. They're, they're made for um, bathtubs. Like a shower thing. Okay, this is a life changer. Anybody ever use a floor tool? Low speed floor tool. 175 floor tool. Raise your hand. One. So low speed floor tool, couple. Did you use one? Yeah. Okay. So a couple guys. 
There's different uh, floor tools. There's high speed, which is called a burnisher. Those are about 2,000 RPMs. We don't use those for restoration. Those are for like marble, tile, grout, things of that nature. We want to use a 175 floor tool, and we're going to use one tomorrow. It spins slowly. You use an extra aggressive malgrit brush. So in anything that you normally hand brush, you can use this floor tool. You can go from as aggressive as you want to just a light brushing. You can even put, um, uh, it's called Dima dime Blade, Dima dime Brush. They're these like metal square types type kind of things, like little blades on the bottom of it. You can peel up coatings with them. Um, but this floor tool, we use it for acid washing, for concrete prep, for stripping up coatings. If you have like the worst case scenario dumpster pad you've ever seen in your life, and you don't want to wait the five or 10 minutes for Double Eagle to work, you can fire up your generator. If you have an outlet, put the floor tool on there. Just floor tool out where that oil is, run your surface cleaner over it, and it's gonna come out cleaner than you could ever believe. And if there's still spots on there, you can put the floor tool, a little more product, the floor tool, and you can kind of uh, buff a lot of those oil stains out. A lot of times 100%, or close to 100%. So a lot of different uses for it. Um, adjustable wand. This is the advanced setup. Jerry McMillan sells this whole thing. Um, you normal, normal, normally you have your, your, your gun and your wand and it's just one piece and your tip. You have no way to control the pressure, no way to get into nick crooks and crannies and stuff like that. And you have 4,000 PSI just coming right out of the tip. Nice thing about this, we have an X-Jet which you can pull your chemical through and this cuts your chemical about 50%. So if you have say five to one double eagle, as soon as it comes through the X-Jet, you're gonna be at 10 to one. Or if you're five to one groundskeeper in a bucket, you run it through the X-Jet, you're at 10 to one. This twist has a throttle type of thing on it, so you can twist it back and forth and go from zero degree to a fan spray. So if you're washing something and you're washing a house, you can go from zero degree to get something that's 20, 30 feet up, just twist it to a fan spray and you're good to go. If you're doing um, you know, little tricky areas and corners, this is a throttle, as this is an ST54 wand, and this kind of throttle deal, you turn it and it bleeds water, so it totally adjusts your, your uh, volume and your pressure. So all your bleed water and the pressure comes out the top. So if you're, you surface clean some, you have little flowers or flower petals, you can turn this down and rinse off all the flowers and stuff. You don't always have to be at that 4,000 PSI trying to wash something. The other thing I do is put a swivel right here. It's a mosmatic swivel. And that way, if you're doing an area here, you don't have to come back and try to, you know, it's all these extra movements you can save on yourself by having the, the proper gun. You can just come up to it, turn it down, twist it, and just blow that stuff out. All your control joints, everything, you can like be as delicate or as abrasive as you want to. And I put a swivel on the back here so you don't um, work against your hoses. If you turn it, a lot of times your hose wants to go up and it's pulling on you. This assures you that your hose stays flat behind you all the time because it automatically flattens it out. And then your ball valve right here, on and off ball valve, so you don't have to go and turn your machine off. If you're doing something, you get done rinsing, or you apply your chemical out of an X-Jet or downstream it, whatever, you just turn this off, pull it out, and stick it right in your surface cleaner. You don't have to turn your machine off. Okay. On that swivel, is it that still a little hustle swivel with pressure on it? Oh yeah. yeah. You got to get the right one. Yeah, I already three or four. Did you mosmatic or no? You got to get mosmatic. If you don't get mosmatic, it's not going to work. Yeah, they they're they're fine if there's no pressure, but yeah, those are great when there's pressure. Okay, this is the one. Okay, the chemicals that I, I say I invented, but I say we do because collectively I have six chemists all together, even though I started with two. Now we have six, but everything is so dialed in with our chemicals. I don't see myself coming out with anything else. And my life has revolved around what I created to work for us and our company. It's great now that six years ago, you know, I didn't want to be pressure washing when I'm eight years old. So I came out with this stuff to you guys to help you use it. So any questions you have on my chemicals, I'm gonna know every, pretty much everything you could possibly want to know because 
I invented them. 90% of what we have, I invented them. So the chemicals that we have are the F9 double eagle, the Eflo, the bark, and the groundskeeper. And whenever we lay them out, they're gonna be in that order. So the F9 double eagle is our cleaner, degreaser, and neutralizer. That's your first step with a bunch of different purposes. Your second cleaner you'll use is the F9 Eflo. If you have hard water stains, um, different types of mineral issues, copper stains, um, mud and red clay stains, that's a whole other family. And it's all outlined and, and laid out the same in the F9 cookbook. So when I talk about them, I all start with the double eagle first, the Eflo, because the Eflo is your next step, then the bark for battery stains, rust and oxidation, and then the groundskeeper for maintenance. Because the, the families of stains, that's the way that the cleaning has to go. Does that make sense? Um, sealers, uh, we use seal and lock for, for pavers. We use a bunch of different sealers. If you guys get into sealers or sealing, just give me a call, let me know. Tomorrow I'll, I will demonstrate the prep on sealing, although I will show you this. If you guys get into, and I did concrete coatings for seven years. I did modified acrylic cements. I did latex based, I did polyurethanes, acetone stains, water-based stains, acid stains, you name it. Um, when you clean concrete perfectly and beautifully, um, and a lot of times we put just a micro etch in that concrete because we want to get it exposed, like the surface perfectly evenly, to about 120 grit sandpaper. When you have concrete perfect, then you can stain it and seal it. So you could take any ordinary concrete that's just gray, and this is a color board. I used um, this stain from Surf Coat, and then I sealed it with Seal Lock. So you can just see um, some of the other things that, that, that you can do to kind of raise the bar in your business. What did you seal it with? Uh, seal and lock. Surf coat, surf coat stain, mm -hmm. very easy to use, and then, uh, then uh, seal and lock. Okay. Okay, obviously surface cleaners, there are surface cleaners that you can use where you can adjust the height. Just want to put it out there. Those are some of our favorites to use, like a land of water jet when you're doing restoration. It's very nice to use because you can adjust the height of it. Um, you just don't want to get too aggressive with your surface cleaners. A lot of times they come and the tips aren't adjusted correctly, or they're too aggressive, or they're the wrong nozzle. You know, you shouldn't be using a surface cleaner and having etch marks all over the place. So tomorrow I will show you the same procedure we use to deal with um, or prepping the concrete is the same procedure we use to get out those surface clean marks. So on water recovery equipment, Jerry McMillan has got to talk to you about that. Um, Hydrotech also makes some very good water recovery stuff. Um, so with the floor tool and that Stratogrit Malgrit brush, this is the color of it. If you guys get the pad, you want to get the orange pad. Uh, the orange pad is a .070 nylon a brush, it's very thick, it's very aggressive, it's durable, and it has these little carbide silicone grits in it. And that pad will last you 400, 500,000 square feet. If you get any other pad besides that one, you're gonna get about 20,000 square feet. So your investment on the orange one is well, well worth the money. So we use that in a variety of ways uh, to aggressively scrub and agitate severe oil stains and heavy buildup. Do the same thing to calcium carbonate and calcite. You can use less product and put that scrubber attachment on it and just zing that calcium right off of there. Uh, it'll help the pre-cleaning process for really bad battery stains. Also for oxidation, even fertilizer stains. If you have bad fertilizer stains, you can put down double eagle, put down that floor tool, surface clean everything off, and you know it's gonna cut so much of that rust off of there, you're gonna use less product which means everything will be a lot more even and look nicer with less product that you use because you use that floor tool. So advantages of, of using our products, the F9 product and processes, is you can effectively learn several simple processes that can be applied to concrete, bricks, pavers, tile, stone, stucco, asphalt, vinyl, shingles, windows, roofs, frames, the whole thing. There are stains and then there are family of stains that are covered in the F9 cookbook that can all follow a very similar procedure and process to remove them. So we learned this one process to clean, restore, and breathe new life into almost any, any surface with just the four products. 
And again, here's the list. Start with the double eagle. It's a cleaner degreaser. You can also use that as a neutralizer for the F9F low. Or if you use bark and you want to seal it afterwards, you can come through with the F9 double eagle just to make sure everything's neutralized and clean. And then you can seal it with a penetrating sealer or whatever, many different sealers out there. Double eagle, the efflow, efflorescence and calcium remover, the bark, which is a battery acid stain, rust and oxidation remover, and then the groundskeeper for the maintenance. So here's a flow chart. I know it's kind of hard to see where you guys are at. Um, that around if you would. Let's make sure that book gets back to me, please. Okay, we have two books available for sale, and this is kind of our soft launch of the all-weather cookbook as well. Um, so our distributors have a deal right now, if you buy three cases of any F9 products, you can get the regular cookbook for 99 bucks, uh, or you can get the all, no, buy three cases, get, get the regular cookbook for free, otherwise standalone price is 99 today and the standalone price for the all weather is 149. The all weather cookbook has the same information as the, the, the regular one does, but it's fully laminated. You see it's a lot thicker than the other one is. And what you'll find is these are some guys, I see them post online, typically new guys who don't know me, my background, what I come out with or what I'm about. They're like, why do we have to pay money to learn about what your product does? It's not about learning what the product does, it's learning about four products that can perform about 140 different processes that are in this book. So basically it's 75% of my brain and everything, like when you guys call me up and I just have an instant answer for you, this is how I came to that answer. So fully diagnosed, it's a, it's a standard operating procedure restoration manual for almost all inorganic staining and almost all exterior surfaces. So there's a lot of information in that book. Pass that around, please. And the way it works, uh, we have concrete, bricks, pavers, tile, stone, stucco, asphalt, vinyl, window shingles, roofs, window frames, the whole thing in that book. They're divided into nine different flow charts. I think there's four for vertical, no, four for flat, five for vertical. This one here is the very first flow chart. It's the most complicated one for concrete but I broke it down into some very simple yes or no questions based on the four products, which are the first one, the double eagle process. You have certain stains that fit in the double eagle. That's the first thing you do is answer this question. So do you have oil, hydrocarbon, food stains, tire marks, general surface accumulations? Either answer yes or no. If you answer yes and you have that, you move to the next family of stains. Do you have efflorescence, calcium, calcium carbonate, calcite, copper stains, mud or red clay stains? Answer yes or no. If you don't have those, you go here. If you do have those, answer yes, you go here. Next question, do you have heavy rust, orange battery stains, fertilizer, snow plow, the list goes on. So if you had one stain in that family, you'd have to use the double eagle in the process, the EFLO in the process, the bark in the process, which will give you your order of cleaning. So step one, the double eagle process in the cookbook, the name of double eagle has a meaning, double, two ways to use it. There's actually more, but two main, re two main ways to use it. One is for your uh, general cleaning and degreasing, for cleaning oils, hydrocarbons, food stains, tire marks. <coughs> All the stuff that typically, you know, other cleaner, degreaser, neutralizers, there's a lot of stuff on, on the market. I've tried them all. I've compared my product to every single one that's out there. There's very few that I haven't tried. So if you're online and you ask me, hey, how does my product compare with this? How does my product compare with that? I'll just say buy the product, find out for yourself, because I already know what the answer is going to be, but I'm not going to sell your product if I think there's another product that works better than ours does. And so far, everybody that's used our product, I mean, every day I get a text and they're like, Craig, keep this between you and me, but this product just blows away this product or that product or whatever, whatever it is. Um, so, also use it for neutralizing other products such as F9 Eflo or efflorescence calcium remover, um, battery acid, which is sulfuric acid, um, or neutralizing concrete before sealing. So, uh, what do we have here? Okay, and I said this before, if you have really, really heavy oil stains, oil accumulation, like if you're doing a dumpster pad, you could throw down some double eagle and then throw down the, uh, the floor tool 
and that stuff will strip right up. They put down you know, your surface cleaner and it's gonna clean really, really well. If you wanna make it even nicer after you do that, run the groundskeeper over the top of it and re-clean it. Because that groundskeeper is made for stuff that are at or below, like inside of the concrete, it can help pull those out. Yes, Lori. I just wanted to add what you said about all the different products. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had my business 30 years and I've learned a lot of products. Everybody says theirs is the best mm -hmm. and they're not. Mm -hmm. And I have a warehouse full of shelves of stuff that I, I had a whole to, storage full of them. Yes. Yeah, it cost me four grand to get rid of it all. That's why we drove out here, because <laughs> we started using some, and I'm like, wow, finally. And yeah. honestly, I think you're undercharging for this book. Well, yeah, I, I am. I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> honestly, I wanted to give the book away, but yeah. I talked to veterans in the industry, these guys with big companies, they're like, you got to charge at least three or 400 bucks for the thing. Like, well, not, you get people online, you know, why are you charging 140 bucks for, you know, for us to learn your product? Well, you're learning an entire spectrum of a restoration industry. You're not just learning and how to- that's the hardest part, really, learning the right chemicals that really do and, and not harm. Right. Because, you know, I've had a learning curve of things mm -hmm. that I did wrong, and yep. it, it's impressive. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that book was just a thorn in my side for years. I had. A, I had a thing in my phone every every morning at 5.30, it would say F9 cookbook. And then finally after like a year and a half, I started telling people, hey, you know, yeah, I'm fine. Because people were asking, hey, when's it gonna be done? I'm like, okay, I started working on it. I'm halfway through. Did I really start it? No. You know? <laughs> and I just told people that because I knew they'd start getting on me and then pretty soon I would have to do it because I said I did it. Well, I guess it worked. I finally got it out there. <laughs> so anyway, um, okay, some more benefits of Double Eagle is like I'm a creature of necessity. I don't do anything until do anything until I absolutely have to, which is why I came out with this. Uh, but Double Eagle has a very fast dwell time versus other stuff, even caustic, potassium hydroxide. I mean, the stuff that can literally kill you. You smell it. I hate working with that. You get a drop on you, it burns you. Your eyes can go blind. You can ask Tony Shelton. He got a couple specks in his eye and didn't turn out so well for him. Um, so it has a very fast dwell time, typically five minutes. You put the stuff down, it works, cut your oils like butter. You know, you run your surface cleaner over it, you get in and out of there. Um, I told the group this morning, I have friends that are veterans in the industry, they're telling me their night route, they're getting in. I mean, some of these guys would start maybe four or five o'clock in the afternoon, usually going to midnight. They're coming home at nine, 10 o'clock at night. Their kids are still up, they're having dinner with their wife, their, their wives are freaking loving it. The reason they're getting in and out so fast, a big reason is the very short dwell times of the product and having them work better than what they're used to. They throw it down, they get in, they get out. So and time is money. Time is the one most valuable thing you can't replace. So step one was a double ego, cleaner degreaser neutralizer. Step two is the F9F flow. Okay, you don't have to use step two or the F flow, but if you have a stain in the family of stains, then you will. So we use the F9 efflorescence and calcium remover, generally used in three ways depending on your purpose. For cleaning calcium, calcium carbonate, mineral stains, and increasing the coefficient of friction in slip and fall areas. So it will put a bite in the concrete. Um, a lot of people hate, you know, they're online, they're talking about etching. Oh, etching's the worst thing that you can do. We make lots and lots of money on etching concrete. Because etching concrete is the first step before putting down what? Putting down a coating, or staining, or sealing and staining, or doing a bunch of different things. We have what's called a fog coat, you turn concrete, you put a light micro etch in everything, put a fog coat, turns it bright white, and then you seal in that look. So it's almost like acid washing, but turns everything bright white. And you don't need anything extra except for the F9F load. We'll show you how to do a fog coat tomorrow. Um, also use it for cleaning copper stains, mud and red clay stains, uh, the fog coat. And uh, next, okay, so after you do that, and the reason you do that, is if you have just one side, like you can't clean the rust or the battery stains if you have efflorescence and mineral stains over that. Mm -hmm. You can't clean the mineral stains and calcium if you have oil covering that. So and you can't clean the rust if you have the oil covering the rust. So you always want to do things in the order. You want to use the double eagle to pre-clean and clean stuff and neutralize stuff. And then if you have the efflorescence and calcium, you need to do that that will pull those hard water stains so you can get to the rust. Because when you use the F9F flow 
and you have a battery stain, you're not going to remove the rust or the battery stain. You might remove a little bit of it, but you're not going to remove the whole thing. But you do have to get rid of the hard water stains until then, then it opens it up so you can get rid of the rust and the battery stains. So yep? I, I need that work in that essay. Do you only recommend post spraying it, or who did downstream it? Downstreaming is going to be too diluted to really be effective. Have you downstreamed it before? I downstreamed the, the double eagle. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, double eagle, you can downstream, 32 ounces in a five, downstream it. You can put double eagle in your house wash mix. You don't want to put any of our other products in your house wash mix. It's going to produce chlorine gas for the most part because the other three we have are acidic. The only one that's bleach stable, bleach compatible is the double eagle. But you can downstream both the double eagle and you can downstream the groundskeeper. Um, wouldn't recommend downstreaming the Eflo or the Bark because they're a restoration and you need to be exact when you're on that surface. I mean, you have to know everything. It's got to be very precise. Yeah? Let me ask you this. What's the difference between a foam lancer and, and the X-Jet? A, fo a foamer shoots foam. The X-Jet just cuts down. It's like shooting it through a regular tip so you don't get all the foam and stuff behind it. But it cuts it down 50%, where a foamer just foams everything up. You know, foamers are great when you're doing, you know, kitchen exhaust cleaning, stuff like that, wheels. Is there a chemical, chemical water ratio differ depending on the quality of water? It doesn't really matter. Okay. No, because your pH is only like one to two okay. the pH. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you dilute it with whatever water. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the bark, step three of the bark process, use again three ways depending on your purpose. For cleaning orange battery acid stains, fertilizer, snow plow blade rust marks, and other heavy rust. Uh, for cleaning irrigation rust stains. And for removing rust stains from metal, pic metal uh, fixtures or pyrite. And the F9 groundskeeper is for maintenance. Do you guys understand what the groundskeeper does? How it works? What it's for? I'd like to hear it. <laughs> so you have concrete. Concrete is alkaline. Concrete gets more alkaline the older it gets. Freshly poured concrete is going to have a pH between probably 8.2 to 8.8. 30 .8. year old concrete, you could be at 11 or 12. The older concrete gets, the more kind of charged it gets because the more alkaline it is, it's like taking a balloon, rubbing it on your head, it's going to have like a static electricity bond. You stick it to a wall, it's going to stay there, right? Well, the more alkaline concrete gets, it kind of generates this electrostatic charge. Falling asleep on me. I, no. <laughs> I would though. So, <laughs> what happens, you can take a brand new slab of concrete, clean something with a high pH on one side, leave the other side that's never been cleaned, come back three months, and the side that you cleaned with the high pH cleaner is going to be dirtier than the area you didn't clean at all. Because once you start cleaning stuff with a high pH, yeah, it's clean at first, <laughs> but you build up that charge, so dirt, dust, debris, environmental stuff sticks to that more than it does something with a lower pH. So when you use a product like the Groundskeeper, yeah, you can go in and clean something with Double Ego, with it, which is a high pH, come back through with the Groundskeeper, which is low pH, and it brings that surface concrete pH level back down to nearly neutral. So your concrete stays cleaner longer, it has kind of uh, almost like a, a hydrophobic property, so stains don't get so far deep into the concrete. The concrete doesn't suck them right down because it has to break that bond first. So if you're out in the field, you start using Groundskeeper, things will stay cleaner longer. Um, your properties will stay like brighter for a longer period of time, which means the future cleanings, it takes a lot less to clean them up. So the double ego will cut your cleaning times down. Well, so will the groundskeeper. And a lot of guys, once you start using, Darren's not here. Who, who uses a groundskeeper? Anybody use it? Anybody use it for maintenance, maintenance accounts? What have you noticed on your maintenance accounts? Oh, it's much easier. It's much faster. It'll stay mm -hmm. Did you mix that? I wonder if you got to do anything. Right. Sometimes, I mean, in, in this uh, one guy, I forget his name, um, George Erskine, Erkin? Erskine, he's, he's on. Ask him about it. He's been cleaning stuff with high pH forever. And he goes in and these guys would like, I mean, defecate and urinate in this one area. He went in one time with Groundskeeper. He came back the next time and he used it like 60 to one and all this stuff just 
like just disappeared, washed right out. Something that used to take him two hours took him like 40, 45 minutes to clean out. And it was a whole lot cleaner when, when he went back to clean it. So things with the groundskeeper will stay cleaner longer. Right. It's made to work uh, at the concrete level and for stuff that's inside the concrete. So it's an excellent maintenance cleaner. Do we make leaves for that? No. No, double ego you can. All the other stuff you can. Okay. Yeah, and typically you spray it on like 10 to 1 to 21. When you get into uh, maintenance, um, you, can, you can downstream it even more. Like 32 ounces in a 5 and downstream it. <laughs> Here's an example of groundskeeper. So this guy, Jeff Price, he's on the board, UMCC, very credible guy, loves the stuff. He went into a Chick-fil-A, and th this is something different, but his story is he went into a Chick-fil-A, he's been after these guys forever, and they have like 19 accounts or something like that. He finally got a demo, because he keeps telling this guy, hey, I don't care when your guy goes in there, let me demo over his demo. Well, the guy was there an hour before. So Jeff Price goes up and he's like, oh man, this sucks. Like, how are we going to do this? The guy just demoed this stuff an hour before he got there. First time ever using the groundskeeper. And his employee had some glasses on. The manager guy is standing over there. His employee puts down a groundskeeper. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. He used like barely any product. He takes a surface cleaner and he slow, slowly started going over the top. And he stopped, got a smile on his face. He looks over like through the cracks in his glasses so you could see uh, Jeff and they're looking at it. I mean, it was a night and day difference. He got that job and he got 19 more accounts on the spot by using Groundskeeper. So that's another thing I didn't say, use it for your demo. Absolutely, you know, um, go in, you know, charge up your customer and tell them, hey, I don't care when your guy is there, you know, it looks like he's doing a great job, but I think we can get it cleaner. Just give me a shot and let me see what I can do. Would you ever go in, like let's say it's an old concrete, it's reading like an 11, would you go in with the groundskeeper first just to bring it to neutral, then a lot of this stuff will just kind of, it'll be released? No, you know, here's the deal. You only want to, you, you want to use a groundskeeper for things that are just like at or in the concrete. If you have stuff that's built up over the top, groundskeeper isn't made to removing oil, it's not made to dissolve oils that are above the concrete. So if you have stuff like this that's obviously above the concrete, you want to get it down to the concrete first with double eagle and then re-clean it with the groundskeeper, especially for demos. But then once you're on that maintenance cycle, you can just keep using groundskeeper. You don't need to do heavy stuff unless there's like real heavy stuff built up. So he cleaned this and you can imagine there was a little bit of a shadow left over, you know, like a lot of stuff. But Jeff cleaned this with F9 double eagle and then he re-cleaned it with the groundskeeper. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we got so successful so fast in Southern California. You know, you bring that stuff down, it cleans a lot of the residual oil stains and stuff that are in the concrete. Does that look pretty good? No Photoshop. I promise you guys, I've never Photoshop. I get accused of that all the time. Oh, you Photoshop that. I'm like, dude, I'll fly to you and you give me the worst case scenario and I'll clean it in front of your eyes. I didn't Photoshop anything. I've never Photoshopped anything. Yeah, yep. So the F9 cookbook, we will get into that a little bit. I think we already covered some of this, but it's more than just directions or instructions on how to remove a stain or a combination of stains. The cookbook is a complete system of processes that have been proven over and over and over through many years of use. So through the use of these processes in the cookbook, we've achieved results far superior than most any of the manufacturer's products or a combination of products. So the, there's flow charts in here, which we went through. Uh, nine flow charts all together. The, the concrete one is the most complicated. They get simpler as time goes on. But you're gonna find a whole lot more uses for our products um, once you get the book and go through everything. There's only so much information. I mean, could you imagine this being the label? I could put this on the label, every single bottle. A lot of stuff in here. So our goal is to give you an advantage. Separate your company from your competition and help you to become an indispensable asset to your clients. This is a very important thing because when you have, I mean, it's like having a BB gun versus a sniper <coughs> rifle. You know, your competition uses BB guns. You've got a sniper rifle. That sniper rifle is your F9 Aflo and your F9 Bark. What we used to do is go into these accounts, commercial property centers, 
He's like, oh, Craig's gonna call on me in a minute. We go into these commercial property centers and I would call him up, hey, how you doing, Craig, with, you know, so-and-so company. You know, I see you must be very happy with the person you have here. You know, they're doing a great job. Just wanna let you know I'm here. Uh, this is what we do. I've been a contractor out here for five years. Um, you know, just to let you know, we also do a lot of niche specific types, types of things. So you, when you go into these places, you don't want to say, hey, you know, your guy looks like a jackass, pardon, you know, but things are etched or whatever. Just tell them, hey, looks like they're doing a great job. I don't know if you're happy with their service or not, but this is what we do. But what I did notice is a couple of the areas with the rust or the efflorescence or the calcium stain, and they probably already know it. And they're used to whatever company that, that, that comes in, they're used to them not being able to do this, you know, extra step up, touch up, top notch stuff. So ask for the demo, tell them you'll do it for free, you know, and you keep doing that once a month, go there, hey, I see your guy was here again, everything looks great. Uh, I'd like to do a free demo for you, either Tuesday or Wednesday, 10, 12 o'clock, one o'clock work best for you. Have them come out with you so you can do the demo, have them watch. And sometimes they'll fire their guy immediately and hire you. Other times you'll get on their uh, vendor list. So it might be a year, two or three years down the road, their guy screwed up and you're in. But if you keep on them and keep doing these little tiny things for free, which doesn't cost you anything, I mean, yeah, you're after the pressure washing contract, but you can get that through doing these other niche things that nobody else can get to. Do you want to tell them about what, you, uh, what you're doing? I'm here, what you I'm did? here. Yeah. All right. So I stand up. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and stand up. My name is Chris. I'm the owner of AZ Power Clean. Uh, been in the business for about seven months now. Been in this industry for about 17 years. I've worked for a couple different companies. Uh, I started my own company um, because I had gained so much knowledge from other companies to know exactly what to do, what's going on out there, and how to uh, come across how things should be. And basically, I'm using the Bark product, the F9. I have an echo sprayer in the back of my truck, ready to go at all times. Uh, I literally went to five restaurants about a month ago, and in 15 minutes, I landed all five. Awesome. So basically, using that product, what, what it does is, like he was saying, it separates you from other competition. And when clients hear that, they're, they basically are getting companies coming in and selling the same pitch every time, every time, every time. You go in and you sell it different and you actually show them a demo right there because you can do it right there. They're, they're blown away by it. They're absolutely blown away and they're going, you know what? This guy will take care of me. This company's been doing this for X amount of years, but they're doing it the same old way. This guy comes in and completely blows it out the door and um, I'm getting ready to sign a contract for uh, 50 restaurants here real soon, right. just because of that. Beautiful. So, you know, you guys were asking me earlier, how do you do this? Well, number one, you gotta have the confidence to go in and, and do what you do best. You know what I mean? Never talk down a company. Um, always uh, stay positive and never talk about, never talk about business right away. You know, go and introduce yourself. Hey, you know, I come in your restaurant. I eat all the time. Love the food. Your your service. Your waitresses, waiters are great. Bartenders always been polite. And then you get into. By the way, this is what I do. And that's the way you come across. You never want to come across uh, aggressive, or you never want to come across by knocking other companies down. Right. Don't ever do that. Yep, kill, kill them with kindness. Yeah. Yep. And then massage that into before you know it, you know, you're their guy. So you're saying ongoing education is vital for what you do, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You can never stop learning. Always learn, yeah. learn, learn, learn. And just to kind of add to or, or further what you said about having confidence, well, you have to have the right product to be confident mm -hmm. and to sell that before you get there and do it. Because I, man, I used them all. I wasn't, I wasn't happy, I wasn't confident in the stuff that I had. But now hopefully, we can change the game a little bit. All right, so in the book, we've got four flat surfaces, five vertical surfaces, all families, estates, and groups. So here's just an example. You have flat concrete, you have oil, 
you have copper stains and you have irrigation rust stains. You go to the double eagle process, do you have oil? Answer, yes. Do you have copper stains? Yes. Do you have rust stains? Yes. So you'd use the oil of the double eagle process. You use the F, F9, use the F9 flow process number two for copper stains. And then if you had the irrigation rust stains, you'd use the F9 bark process number two for the irrigation rust stains. So here's the F9 double eagle process. That's the very first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's the very first um, page right behind the flow chart. And then you get into the F9 flow processes of the next pages, the bark of the next pages. So you have that. Here's the F9 flow pro process number two in concrete. Purpose to remove greenish staining from copper. Okay, do that one. Then you have the F9 bark process number two to remove the irrigation rust stains. Does your everything. What to do on there? So I've got a lot of time people ask me the, the battery stain. Okay, I'll just skip this real quick. But the battery stain stuff. Like I said I'm going to give you the PDF for this. If you have battery stains, use this track. You can put it on your website. And you want to learn this when you're talking to your customers. It's going to help you sell all those battery stains. Do you guys want to hear it right now or no? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I just don't want to go over my time. I'm ready over my time. You guys take my time. My time thieves. All right. So two very common questions I get is how to sell rust or battery acid stains. Here's a sales track. You tell your customer, hey, you know, first thing I come up there, I'm like, whoa, you know, you've got an issue that's unlike any other stain you could possibly have. You have sulfuric acid from your golf cart, from an electric battery. These, are, these aren't just like a stain. This is hazardous, toxic, corrosive, and carcinogenic. So sometimes I'll measure the pH. There's a whole other way to do that. Uh, most of the time you don't. You just tell them, hey, EPA, stormwater compliance, DOT, hazardous, toxic, corrosive, carcinogenic. You can have an SDS sheet on sulfuric acid and show them all the hazards on it. So if the stains are white, if they walk through it, it releases those little particles up into the air, in the atmosphere. I tell those, the, the homeowner, hey, do you have dogs, animals, pets, children, anybody walk through this, walk inside your home? Because I would normally recommend they clean their tiles and clean their carpets. Because they are tracking sulfuric acid residue through their home. And the stuff is nasty. It's one of the nastiest chemicals out there. So battery stains are unlike any other stain a homeowner could have. They're 31 to 50% acid by concentration in a lead acid battery. And although concrete is alkaline, it's not alkaline enough to neutralize those battery stains, which is why you use Double Eagle to neutralize the stain, clean the tire marks, clean the oil, get all that stuff done in one process. Um, a lot of times the battery stain, every time it gets wet, it reactivates and an orange stain can form and go all the way down, tracking down even a quarter mile or up to a half a mile and go down into the storm drain. A homeowner can look at fines of up to $37,500 per day. That's in California. Out here might be different. But in California, if they have a hazardous substance going down into the storm drain, $37,500 per day, they can get a fine. Commercial property like um, AutoZone, Cragen, Napa, Trojan, Interstate, U.S. Battery, Exide, those places can get fined up to $100,000 per day. We get leads through our website. We have a team called the F9 team. It's a perpetual marketing program. I'll get into it in a little bit. Leads come in from those types of places, and we don't bid a, a penny under $3 a square foot. Most places are between five and 6,000 square feet. So I'll recommend an authorized, app, authorized applicator to go out there neutralize everything and many times those stormwater compliance guys like the regulator the city regulators they're there standing over everybody to make sure stuff doesn't go down into the storm drain but these guys crack 15 18 20 thousand dollars in two days worth of work when they have those kind of leads come through so typically we, we do between two and two to two and a half million dollars worth of leads coming through our website that we give out freely we don't make any money on those we just want the best people to do the best job with the best product so <laughs> So that's pretty much it. Um, I gave you, we like to use these types. They're like eight by 14, 11, something. I don't know. Anyway, they're long, UV coated. I like the, um, the rounded corners, fit very well in between doors without catching anything. So if you, you know, you go knock on the door, nobody's there, you just kind of slide one of these in. Um, 
This is a check it out flyer. You can also do your EDDM with these. They work very well. This is what I call a check it out flyer. Check it out flyer, you put your list of services on here. And say the next day your guys go out, they do an address. You can write down the address here so your neighbor, and it just kind of like reduces the look of it being a total solicitation when you have, you know, not the name of the neighbor, but the address. So people can go check out whatever you did. But of course you're advertising to them. So if we go into a neighborhood and do a battery acid stain, we'll put down that we did, you know, the driveway for whatever it is, throw it in the neighbor, but we'll do like six or eight homes across the way that have that issue, and three or four to the right of the home that what we did. And normally for every 22 homes that we send one of these, we get at least a lead, if not a job. So those work very well for us. Okay, so how to sell regular rust jobs? Uh, rust is an oxidation. It can damage and oxidize the surface it's formed on or formed from. Uh, rust will continue to harden over time and become more difficult to remove. So especially out here in the sun, we get a lot of fertilizer stains. The longer they're there, the more the sun beats on them, the harder they get and the harder they are to get off. So other rust removers will etch the concrete, permanently removing the cream and leaving a scar. We see that all the time. Most other rust removers are either phosphoric acid, oxalic, which is a little toxic, but it works, works well as for light rust stain removal. Um, the big player, I guess, would be hydrochloric acid, which is totally toxic, totally hazardous, and can get you sick really, really quick. That's what got me sick 12 years ago. Uh, the only other options to remove rust on concrete or hard surfaces is to grind, scarify, bead, blast, tear out, replace, or put a coating over the surface. So all these options obviously either result in damage um, or are more costly than using the F9 pads. I think you guys will like this um, in the PDF I send you, where to find work with rust removal. You can take our product and look at all these places. Golf courses, schools, airports, RV lots, car dealerships, government, military agencies. All these places have um, golf course, your golf carts that are either roaming around or they taxi up and down the airport. Um, hotels, motels, resorts have concrete pool decks and golf carts. Uh, property management companies, AAA, vacation resorts, manufactured housing developments. What we used to do is just grab some of our, our rust remover, go to a, a property management center or a commercial property. And a lot of times you even do a little demo just to make sure the stuff works and whatever we do. One thing I promote is to always do a test or a demo. You know, especially it's gonna help set customer expectations, set your expectations, and you know exactly what to do. Um, but anyway, you get the product, you start using it, you realize this whole another world opens up to you and you can really um, make a difference in your company. So not only can you look for business yourself, you can also network and get leads from all these places. So we would take, um, you know, make a little flyer or something, and then you go take it for uh, campgrounds. Campgrounds all over the place. A lot of these RVs, either they leak um, battery acid or they have golf carts. A lot of RV, RV places have golf carts, and that's what they use to go around their little RV places. Um, con contractors get leads and referrals from them. Landscape companies, you can go and do their trucks. You have landscape companies, they get all rust all over them, plus they spill fertilizer. Sometimes you'll get entire communities. We have one place right now in Canada that we're working with, they have over 80 homes. They have 80 homes that these contractors spilled fertilizer stains that they already got paid by the insurance company 140 grand. So we have a contractor there trying to get that and it's gonna be a whole lot less than what they got paid. So he can make 80, 90,000 plus they can you know, I don't know if their insurance company is watching, but I think everybody's going to make out on that deal. Uh, many other other areas to find rust. You can just go, and once you know this is something you should be looking for, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. At our trash containers, mailboxes, newspaper stands, hardware stores, parking lots, it's everywhere. Loading docks. Um, so changing gears now into health and safety cleaning. So what is the most beneficial thing we do as power washing companies, in my opinion, we help reduce the incidence of slip and falls and increase the coefficient of friction. Yes, things get cleaned in the process of making them safe. It's great. So when someone, when someone and this is very, very important, <laughs> when someone slips, trips, or falls on a person's home, outside a store, on a sidewalk, 
Uh, the most common question the insurance agency asks is who's responsible? Well, there's laws that go, that coexist with the coefficient of friction under the American Disability Act called premises liability. So premises liability is the legal responsibility that property owners have for injuries that occur on their property due to slip and fall accidents. If a person slips, trips, or falls as a result of a dangerous or hazardous condition, such as slippery concrete, oil, sand, dirt, dust, debris, whatever it is on there, calcium, hard water stains. So uh, in general, property owners are held accountable for falls that result from ice, snow, and all these other things. So the measure of how slippery the surface <coughs> is is called the coefficient of friction. So other dangerous conditions include sand accumulation, oil grease, and stuff I, I just mentioned. Um, five major causes of slip and fall accidents, lack of slip resistance on walking surfaces is number one. So slip resistance is measured with a device called a trebometer. The trebometer that the insurance company uses is about, is about a $9,000 deal, $9,000 contraption. I've seen them, I've used them, they're great. Are we gonna buy them? Yes. Hopefully we're gonna buy one before the end of this year. So people who come to class, we don't have one now, but if you come to class, we can get you certified in how to use this, <coughs> and you can go to your properties, your hotels, motels, get a property map, measure out some of the coefficient of frictions on the sidewalks, and then let them know, hey, these are hazardous areas. American Disability Act, you might want to do something about that, or let, let them know that you're available to help them raise the coefficient of friction to adhere, become um, in compliant with the American Disability Act. Uh, just so you know, not a huge deal, but just so it's out there, the, the, the static coefficient of friction is what the insurance company measures. And it needs to be between a 0.05 and a 0.08. Anything lower than that, like if you measure ice, it's gonna be a zero, or 0 0.1. So some statistics on slip and falls. Lots of other uses for the products. I think we've gone over enough of them. Um, just a little plug on here. Who here is on the F-19? Ron's on the F-19. Who's on the F-19? Well, Jer Jeremiah's on it. You know anybody else? He's on there. You're on it. Okay, guys, if you buy a case of product, you can get on the F-19. The F-19 is a perpetual co-op marketing system, which means you buy a case of product, you own your company, I know Tony's on it. You can situate yourself to get free leads from our website. Google so, Rust right now. Guess what? So people come up. If you Google concrete rust removal, F19 will come up. A um, lot of different uh, internet, like if you Google fertilizer rust stains, fertilizer rust stain removal, how to remove battery acid stains on concrete, the, which homeowners do all the time, you're going to find us, which is going to lead you to you guys. If you're listed with us, there's certain ways that we cross-link. Um, we, we give you a um, business listing in our website, give you up to 10 cities you do business in, and it's a, it's a way we cross-link your website in with us so that you get all of those backlinks, and it's gonna bring you up that Rust Removal page normally within a couple of weeks on the first page of Google, which helps your entire website. So everybody wins. You piggyback off of us, and we can get you leads that way. And how do we get on that? You said buy something? Yeah, buy a case of product. If you get a, a case of product, you go on frontlinerestoration.com. On the right-hand side, there's a link called F9 University. Underneath that, it's how do I become authorized. Huh. And it gives you all the benefits of it, what you need to do, create a rust removal web page, link to our gallery pages, at least three services you provide. So if you provide um, battery acid stain removal, you link to our gallery page under battery acid stain removal. Okay. Fertilizer rust stains, you link that to fertilizer rust stain removal. Within about two weeks, normally you're on the first page of Google okay. with that. So yeah, that's, I think that's about it, guys. Let's do one last run here. How to become authorized. We're done. Thank you guys for coming. A lot of information there. I will send this to you guys, and then if you have any questions, whatnot.